What's up guys, welcome back once again to Digi Reviews. Uh, today I'm going to do a short video based on uh, calling, calling a water cooling loop or an AIO, whichever you want to look at. Uh, so basically all I'm going to do today is I'm going to uh, basically show you the difference in terms of what sort of cooling performance you get from a, a fan designed as a case fan more so as opposed to one designed as a static pressure radiator fan. Uh, and for this basically I'm going to compare this which is the Aerocool Astro 24 which I did a video in which I'll put up in the corner there and this is actually a great fan so don't get me wrong this isn't bad at all this is actually really good um, but this is more designed for it's more designed for a GPU cooler but can be used as two case fans this is two 120 millimeter fans um, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to test the performance of this against some EK Vardar 120 fans that I have um, now in terms of difference in specification these only go up to a thousand RPM which is obviously quite low They're actually really quiet as well so these are actually really good for that uh, and these are 1.68 millimeters h2o for static pressure uh, rating which is actually bad um, and like i say don't get me wrong these are actually really good even on a radiator these are quite good uh, and you'll see from the performance graphs later on um, just how good they are um, and like i say i'm going to compare these to a set of uh, EK Varda 120 fans, which I've got on a Aerocool 45mm um, Nexos radiator. Um, so I've got two of those on there, as opposed to two of these on there, which I used to have. Um, and the Vardar fans are 2.24mm H2O for static pressure. So obviously, as you can see, on paper, you would expect them to be uh, a lot better anyway. Um, which, uh, obviously, I'll show you in the graphs um, just how much better they are, and whether you need to go for static pressure. Um, like I said, one thing I will say is um, these are actually really good uh, and absolutely fantastic value for money. I think for this one, which is obviously two 120 meter fans, about £25 in the UK, so they're actually really good. Um, also, you can buy the Astro 12s, which are just literally single ones of these, which are fantastic as well. You can get a three pack of those for £30, £35, um, so these are really good. Um, so like I say, let's get into the graphs and I'll show you what the difference is uh, between the lot. Right, so in order to test these, I used uh, hardware info um, to test the to keep uh, an, an eye on the temperatures that I was getting, and um, basically I did f uh, I did three tests in total, um, obviously plus an idle reading, um, and then we to basically just to see what it, what it was like. So what I've done is I've given a temperature average that it got to and what that was over ambient, ambient because I did these two tests at different times so there was a slight variation in the ambient temperature in this room. Um, it is quite hot at the moment here, um, this room does get really hot especially with my PC running all the time. Um, so I kept an eye on the temperatures uh, and basically obviously I recorded them and showed you what the difference is between the two. Um, so let's talk about idle temperatures, um, there wasn't a massive difference between idle so the air recalls uh, Averaged out at 31 degrees at idle, which is, at the time was 5 degrees over ambient. So as you can see, it was 26 degrees now at the time. Uh, and then the EKs came out at 29, which was 4 degrees, because it was only 25 degrees in there at the time. Um, so, 1 degree difference could be, it could be true, or it could be basically just uh, a bit of margin of error. It's, it's hard to say really with short, such a small difference, but it does show a difference. Um, you would expect the Vardars to be better, obviously. Uh, then we looked at uh, a few synthetic uh, benchmarks. I didn't do any gaming with these, but I have been keeping an eye on gaming since I installed them, and the Vardars are doing better. Um, so then I looked at the Unigen Superposition benchmark, and for the Astro 24s or Astro 12s by 2, um, Basically, I came out at an average of 52, which was 26 degrees over ambient. Um, again, not bad at all. And the Vardars came out at 50, which was 25 degrees over ambient. Obviously, because, like I say, there was a difference in the ambient temperature in the room. Uh, then I moved on to Time Spy. I just did the CPU test because I'm just testing how it calls the CPU. The GPU is not connected to the uh, custom loop at the moment, uh, which it will be soon, and I'll do a video on that. Um, so basically I'm just testing the CPU temperature, so I just did a CPU test, there's no point in doing more. Obviously these are quite short tests that I'm doing, so it's probably not the best way to get an overall idea of the performance, um, but I'll show you one in a second which I did, which takes a bit longer and there is quite a big difference. So in Time Spy, for the Astros we were at 60 degrees uh, average and that's 34 degrees over ambient. And the Vardars were 59 degrees average and again 34 degrees over ambient. So exactly the same results there. Um, so, yeah, I don't really know why. Um, didn't really do any better. Now, the one that was interesting was when I ran Cinebench 
20 r 20 whatever it's called um so i just ran that through once obviously that is a test with a 7700k that takes quite a while um obviously a couple of minutes um as opposed and it's it's a lot more stressful on the cpu so it's it gives you a better idea of um the performance difference so uh, for the Cinebench, we've just one run through. Um, I might do some more tests for you in the future and just keep running it through and get a soap test and see see what happens and time the difference and how it ta how long it takes to saturate the the loop. Um, but uh, the Astro Twenty Four uh, on the Cinebench test was seventy degree degrees average and was forty four degrees over ambient. So as you can see, quite a lot warmer. It is a much more stressful test on the CPU. And then this is where it gets interesting, using the EK Fardar fans, um, they only came out at 64 degrees, so 6 degrees cooler, and that's only 29 degrees over ambient. Uh, is that right? Yes. Um, so, as you can see, quite a big difference there, really. Um, yeah, because we had 25 degrees in, in the room at the time, and I think a 64 degrees average, so yeah, um, only... Yes. Yeah. Only um. Only uh, twenty nine degrees over ambient, and like I say, the uh, Astros were forty four degrees over ambient. So it's quite a big difference there, really. So as you can see, um, from that, you are always going to be better with a static pressure fan. However, the the difference is um not massive on everything. It is de is depending on what you're using it for. And how quick it can get that thing, and obviously it depends on your case, on your setup, and what you're using. Um, you might have a case with better airflow, getting more air, air in to cool it down better, um, or you might have a bigger radiator, that kind of thing that uh, slower fans can deal with. Um, so basically, what I'm going to say for this one is, obviously, yes, um, static pressure fans are much better, but if you're wanting things like RGB and stuff like that, static pressure fans are really, really expensive. Um, so for something that's going to do a great job. Um, and give you your RGB if you want um, then something like the Astro 24 Astro 12s are actually fantastic for the job um, they do a really good job especially as they're only moving at 1000 RPM they're, they're super quiet and I've noticed since putting the Vardars in because I basically ran these all at full speed since putting the Vardars in the system has got noticeably louder um, which I suppose I expected really um, with them moving so much quicker um, so yeah that's basically the conclusion really Static pressure fans are better, but they're a lot more expensive if you want RGB. If you don't want RGB, then you can save a bit of cash and you can probably uh, work something out. I've got Arctic uh, 12 PST fans on one of my radiators on my PC, and they're only like £5 each, so they're actually could be pretty cheap. So if you're not bothered about RGB, which a lot of people aren't, then static pressure fans all the way. Uh, and most people probably already know this, but I was just, thought, I was just interested in to see what the difference would be um, and whether it was worth doing. Um, so yeah, basically I'm going to do another test in terms of uh, water cooling loops soon. I'm going to test, because uh, at the moment I've got on my 480mm radiator, I've got four Astro 12s on one side and four um, Arctic fans on the other side. So I'm going to see what the difference makes in terms of push-pull on that radiator as well. And I'll do a video about that. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Not the most exciting video in the world, but it's just uh, food for thought. Um, so you can see what the difference is when you're trying to choose a fan for your water cooling loop or for your AIO. Um, you might find that the fans that come with your AIO are just good enough anyway, or you might want to increase the performance a little bit. But like I say, um, I hope you found it interesting, I hope it helps in some sort of way. Uh, if you have any comments, leave them in the comment section below. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you liked this video, double click the thumbs down if you didn't, and um, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers guys.